Okay, so good morning everybody. Welcome and thank you for joining us this morning in our business services webinar. This webinar is part of a monthly webinar series that we are putting on um, and we want to welcome our presenter today, Jeff, from the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation. He'll be presenting today on DVR and the services they provide to people with disabilities, including full service business services program for employers, which is facilitated by business service consultants and offers support in areas of recruitment, retention, financial incentives, and training opportunities. I also want to let you all know that Next month's webinar will be November 14th. The presenter will be Tom Casey from the Department of Workforce Development. He is one of their veteran representatives, and that webinar will be Hiring Our Heroes, Veteran Employment Programs for Businesses. Um, so with that, if anybody has any questions, otherwise, I hope everybody's able to see the screen. Otherwise, you need to log on. If you're on the call, make sure you also log into the website as well so you can see Jeff's screen. And we will take questions afterwards. So Jeff, if you want to take it from here. Thanks, Mary Lois. Of course. Hello, everyone. Jeff Pooler from the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation, commonly known as DVR. I am the business services consultant for WDA7. And let's move ahead. Okay, how do I make it go ahead again, Mary Lois? You're going to probably click the right arrow button on your keyboard, Jeff. That should make it go to the next slide. The zero button? The right arrow. The right arrow, okay. Yeah. That's not working. I was able to scroll with the mouse earlier. Yeah, but this is in um, slideshow version. Can you hit the space bar? That might sometimes makes it progress. That's not working either. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you click on it, there might be a little arrow that pops up on your side. Oh, oh there you go. You found there. it. Okay. Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> So DVR provides services to people with disabilities who want to work. And this is a voluntary program, so that's, um, that's something that, of course, that we respect. And we provide services um, such as counseling, skills development. We do what we call temporary work experiences. We're also involved in supportive employment. And then we will also help them with education necessary to achieve their career goals. And that could include going to a tech school, getting some type of a certification, or possibly even going on to post-secondary college and graduate school. Individuals with disabilities do represent a large minority group, actually the largest in America. Uh, Every 10 minutes, nearly 500 Americans develop a disability, which I found to be pretty staggering. One in five people in the United States is a person with a disability, and that constitutes 20 million families that have at least one member with a disability. So a pretty significant market share in the United States. On a nationwide basis, the employment rate for people with disabilities is only 34.9% versus 76% for people without disabilities. <coughs> Wisconsin's a little bit above that, at ranking in the top 10 at 41.2%. So this shows that there is a large talent pool out there and available for employers. Pretty simple mission, uh, assisting individuals to obtain, maintain, or improve their employment. You know, to find a job, keep a job, get a better job um, is something that we talk about with all of the individuals. How do we go about that? Well, we engage with 16,000 job seekers who are working towards an employment goal. And with their counselor, what they do is they develop that individualized plan for employment, typically an IPE, um, and it defines the job goal you know, what services are needed to reach that goal, and then 
the job seekers' role and responsibilities. We're a support network. We're not going to do everything for them, but we do act as a support network typically for them. So they do have responsibilities, and normally they're given a calendar. They have to make their appointments, you know, go to their um, – if they have interviews, obviously they have to show up on time and be prepared for those, things of that nature. This map shows where the directors of the locations are throughout the uh, state. Tom Draghi, my manager, is located in Ladysmith, and that is my home base as well. So that's uh, beneficial for him and I because then we have an opportunity to see each other on a regular basis and discuss you know, our outreach strategies, different things of that nature, any issues we may be having throughout the area. And, of course, we are WDA7, so we're the northwest 10 counties of the state. And here you see that on the map. Um, there are 11 areas throughout the state, and WDA is simply workforce development area. PBR Partners. We work with a lot of different partners. We have a service provider network, and typically they're a third party contracted individuals or companies, depending on their status. And what they do is in a lot of cases they provide um, mock interviews, resume preparation. They also can help with uh, job development, so things of that nature. Where I personally do not go out and seek a job for one individual. I sell the bigger picture of DVR. Job developers take that individual and they will go and seek that individual job opportunity for that person that they're representing. Uh, we also have a statewide network of job centers, of course. Um, there's other DWD divisions and programs that are out there. And there's regional workforce um, development areas. We work with people like SAP the Workforce Investment Board, um, veterans. We have tribal partners. So a number of different partners throughout the area. Getting into some of the numbers, um, 2016 served 4,615 consumers who achieved successful employment outcomes. There you see the average hourly wage of $12.80, I believe is above the norm. Um, Weekly hours work, 26.7. So you know, most of our, a majority of our people, they are not seeking full-time employment. So 26.7, around 30 hours a week, I would say, is fairly average. Um, top five categories, office and administration, food prep, um, maintenance, production, sales and retail. And that all kind of falls into our areas um, biggest employer, so it's pretty typical for WDA7. Uh, business Services Consultants, of course, that's my title. There's nine of us statewide, and we act as liaisons, and typically, you know, we offer employers information and support services, so we're trying to educate employers as to DVR's role in the labor market. Um, we provide hiring incentives. There are some financial incentives that are available. We provide labor market information if that's necessary. We help with recruitment, you know, job fair, customized recruitment events, things of that nature. Um, obviously, DVR offers an untapped labor pool, so we're always trying to uh, seek opportunities for our job seekers. And then training services, if someone is interested in learning more about what DVR offers, um, how can we train our staff to be um, more aware of disabilities and things of that nature, that's also something that we can do. One of our um, financial benefits is an on-the-job training, OJT. It's an individualized training program conducted at a work site, basically at the employer's location. And it supports a hire. So when we enter into this agreement, uh, it's an investment aimed at success. DVR reimburses the employer up to 50% of the fringe benefit and the wage package uh, during the training period, which can last up to 90 days. At the end of the 90 days, the employer has agreed to then hire the individual onto their normal payroll. 
We also offer um, youth OJTs that can reimburse the employer for up to 100% of a wage for 500 hours. Typically, we see those over the summer months when the students are not engaged in high school activities. Another financial incentive is the internship temporary work, and that's really geared towards people that have a limited resume that don't have a lot of work experience, and so we're trying to get their foot in the door to see what might work well for them. Uh, again, it's provided uh, information on a day-to-day -day work requirements. It helps them in a real job setting, so can they show up on time? Can they get along with coworkers? Can they follow directions? Things of that nature that um, some of us tend to take for granted. We do contract with a third party who is responsible for payroll and servicing and things of that nature. Um, we fund those internships, the temporary work experiences, at 100% of the wage, again, for up to 90 days. And then at some point in time, we may go into an OJT. They may find that it just is a, their cup of tea, so then, you know, we can back out and maybe take another strategy on their behalf. Training and placing programs, um, they've worked with Wheaton Franciscan, which is a large um, hospital organization in the Milwaukee area. Walgreens pharmacies also have a national program called Ready that has been pretty successful. And there's also Project Search. And hopefully we're going to reach 27 sites in Wisconsin by the fall of 2018. Currently there is no Project Search site in WDA 7. The closest we have is at Rice Lake in WDA 8 at Rice Lake Weighing Systems, which is, if I'm not mistaken, the first manufacturing setting that has uh, taken place. So that's something that's promising. Uh, the Wisconsin Promise Grant is an initiative that was intended to improve services for youth that were receiving benefits and their families. Um, Promise services help those youths um, achieve better education and career outcomes. They're trying to get them to graduate from high school, um, college preparedness, considering careers earlier in their um, student career, possibly completing post-secondary education and job training and ultimately obtaining competitive employment in an integrated setting, which is one of our overall goals, of course, is to keep the settings integrated. There's a total of 2,024 youth and their families that have been enrolled throughout Wisconsin. They receive an array of services related to employment skills development and education. So really what we're trying to do is break uh, generational flow here that but typically families that receive services or have received um, SSI in a lot of cases the kids tend to emulate the parents and think that this is the way normal life is you know you you just receive these benefits and you go through life without really becoming employed or develop your education in any skills and of course that's what we're trying to do is change that um, Nearly 600 Wisconsin Promise family members and over 400 youth are now employed. Project Search is another program that DVR has. It's a transition program providing training and education to young adults with disabilities aged 18 to 24. What they do is they go to a site um, five days per week and report to their host business and they are learning employability school, their skills rather, in the classroom setting. And then they do hands-on work within the business environment as well. I believe that most of these have transpired in hospital settings as well to this point. And typically more in the metropolitan areas, Milwaukee, Madison, so forth. The program has had 459 graduates in Wisconsin. Uh, there's been 24 sites throughout Wisconsin, primarily healthcare, but there's also been hospitality, manufacturing, retail, and insurance. By 2018, in the fall, Wisconsin will have 27 active project search sites.
some success stories. This is something that we're always sharing with the governor's office on a weekly basis because they like to have uh, information from our division so they can share that with the legislature, um, possibly public groups and others that are interested. Um, so here's a consumer that came to DVR. Mobility limitations, had a right and left um, below the knee amputations. DVR helped him obtain new prosthetic legs and provided job development services to help the consumer expand his customer base. So that's real typical for us. We can help with um, assistive technology, uh, possibly the purchase of work boots, things like that. Anything that's a uh, good investment to help the consumer advance in their career. Um, this consumer's business picked up and now makes an average of $27.40 per hour working 30 hours a week uh, as a self-employed real estate appraiser. And as you can see, um, he stated that you gave me my life back. Another consumer came to DVR, wanted to work uh, as an assistant in a skilled trade environment. Started with the work experience, went to on-the-job training at a local woodworking shop. Um, the business, ordinarily hiring only full-time employees, appreciate the consumer's work, but they created a permanent part-time position to accommodate his disability. Um, we call this job carving, and that's something that the service providers try to do as well, is identify within a business organization maybe an opportunity where the business doesn't even really realize that they're losing productivity and we can carve out an opportunity for one of our the job seekers to come in and help them to become more um, efficient in that particular area. Uh, that particular consumer now makes up to $10 an hour working 20 hours per week. One more. Consumer came to DVR, wanted to return to work after more than a decade-long absence from nursing work due to sustaining an injury. And we see this a lot. People come to us that have been out of the workforce, maybe due to injury, illness, whatever the situation may have been. Um, so they're trying to re-enter the workforce, and so we, we try to help them find the path to do that. Um, DVR helped her find employment that worked for her limitations working an average of 36 hours per week, registered nurse, making more than $24 per hour plus benefits, very nice compensation package. Um, she was able to adopt to modern record keeping practices that, uh, you know, she was having fun, obviously, and that she's happy to be back at work in the nursing field. And as we all know, we need a lot of nurses in the state of Wisconsin. So we look at ourselves as a source of skilled talent. Um, we typically have 6,500 job seekers who we deem as job ready throughout the state, and so we're actively seeking employment opportunities for those people. Um, we're committed to their success and the employer partner. So we really look to serve not only our job seekers, but we have to serve employers as well. So we, we talk about that as a dual customer situation because we, want, we need the outcome to be favorable for both in order for us to move forward and have success in the future. So we do our very best to prepare people to be successful. There are challenges, of course, but we try to work through those the best we can. Some different resources that are out there, uh, the Job Accommodation Network, that's a nice one for employers that may not really understand or have thought about um, having someone with a disability working for them. Uh, the Great Lakes ADA Center, there's a, our referral address, and that's typically where people can go and fill out the form to become referred to DVR, and then our counselors will contact them, uh, make an appointment with them, and then they're either deemed eligible for services, and if they are, then they start receiving services. And then there's ILC, that's the uh, long, -tier, long care term facilities. So just some resource information that's available. And that pretty much concludes the PowerPoint. Do we have any questions?
Are the PowerPoints the available on the website? Pardon me? Are the PowerPoints that you used available on the website? They are not. No, that's um, that's something that's property of DWD, so I cannot make that available. Okay, thank you. But if you would want me to present this to your business, your HR professionals, something like that, that would be available. And you see my contact information there, so you can feel free to call me, email me, whatever your favorite um, mode of communication is. I'll respond to you. Otherwise, um, this webinar that Jeff just presented will be posted on our website, along with the transcription that Jeff of what Jeff spoke on on the business services webinar website. Any other questions for Jeff? Okay. Well, thank you, Jeff, so much. We really appreciate it. Um, and thank you, everybody. And be sure to tune in next time on November 14th um, for our next webinar. All right, Jeff, you can go ahead and hit record again. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Mary Lois. Thank yep. you for participating, everyone.